Moin, 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 and welcome to the very first episode of Full Throttle, your favorite weekly recap of Drag Race Germany, Season 1. I am your host, Extra Extra, and I am honored to have with me here today a very special guest, all the way from Aachen, Germany, Thomas! Hi! Thomas, thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. It's so good to see thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, of course. So, well, a little bit about myself. I am an American, but I am a longtime super fan of the RuPaul's Drag Race franchise, and I have quite a long history with Germany as well. Um, over the last 15 years or so, I have spent two separate full years there doing study abroads and getting to know people, studying the language, and I am so happy that now I have friends and family sprinkled across the country from München bis nach Flensburg. Uh, what about you, Thomas? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, yeah, I, I'm not American. I'm German. Um, I oh actually only got uh, introduced to Drag Race around, when did we meet? Like six years ago? It was I think. 2017. Oh my god, that's six years ago. Um, so yeah, I'm I, like uh, actually, you were the one that introduced Drag Race to me, and ever oh. since then, I've been. I I did not know that. How did you not know it? <laughs> I, just, I just assume I assume that all the gays everywhere have known about Drag Race since the beginning of time. Uh, um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I I, I knew that it existed, but I started <laughs> watching it because of you. Actually, the first season I watched was season seven, actually. And but, season seven gets a lot of shit yeah. from the fandom, but. I mean, some of my absolute favorites come from that season. It's it's like it's still one of my favorite seasons because it's the first one I saw. So I don't care what anyone says. Fair enough. Um, yeah. Well, I know when I was in Aachen, I I experienced a little bit of the German drag scene. I met a couple of local queens and went to some really fun events in Cologne, but I didn't have a whole lot of like close interaction with it. What's your experience yeah. with German drag then? Uh oh. <laughs> Basically non-existent. I think I, I mean, I know Olivia Jones, who like most famous German drag queen that right. basically everyone knows, even even straight people. But other than that, I think I met drag queen at one gay party. A friend of mine does drag, but that's it. To be fair, the town where I'm from doesn't have like a huge gay scene, so <laughs> I don't really participate that much in like queer culture here. Well, and I do like that the cast is from a variety of cities around Germany. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, and not just Germany, right? Right, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. there are queens from, from Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. Yeah. Uh, there are a couple of queens originally from Brazil that now live in the German-speaking realm. Yeah, and I love that. I really do, too. I, th I saw some people online that were disappointed that there wasn't more representation from Berlin because there is so much drag in Berlin, but I really like that they, they opted for, for more variety of representation. Yeah, same. Uh, I mean, to be fair, I think Germany is like smaller than Texas, so uh, maybe there's not as much variety as in the United States. I mean, as a German, like I like I can I can still distinguish where you're from, whether whether or not you're from northern Germany or like southern Germany. Like my sister has been living in southern Germany for ten years now, and she's adopted so many of the mannerisms. And like, I'm very happy that we get like like a bigger variety than just from. Berlin. And, I mean, you could probably do like a whole season with just queens from Berlin and or Cologne. So yeah, I'm really glad that they opted out of that option. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but no, I really am just so glad that there is a Drag Race Germany now. You know, I think the first season oh, yeah. I watched was season four of the US show. And it's been a long time dream of mine since I've had such a close relationship with Germany to see a bunch of German speaking queens uh, be able to compete. And, you know, with all the new seasons, you never know, like, which ones are going to be, you know, kind of underfunded and pushed off to the side and not oh, yeah, great, yeah. which we've seen a, a couple of franchises. But these girls all look super high quality. The production value is up there. But it's interesting because they filmed it uh, at the Paramount Studios in Colombia, where they filmed both the Mexico and Brazil seasons. So it's got the glitz and glam of that set and production quality, which I just love. And I think it does the Queen's justice, you know. Yeah, it's amazing. Like, I did not anticipate that they would be like this polished. Yeah. Maybe, I mean, to be fair, like I said, I do, like, I don't have any experience with German drag queens, right? right? right. But, like, uh, I, I, I genuinely did not expect them to be on this, like, level of... Um, that professionalism Polish. and the looks as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, and some of you may remember that back in 2019, on ProZeben, they showed a drag competition show that was hosted by Heidi Klum, uh, Bill Callitz from Tokyo Hotel, and Conchita Wurst. 
uh, the Eurovision winner from from Austria. Um, and there there are a lot of feelings about that online. Like it was it was a little <laughs> bit of a mess, but. It was my first exposure to to real like German drag queens, you know, that are are doing it full time, and you know, as messy as as it was, um, and whatever complaints you want to say about it, it it exposed me to some really talented queens like Bambi Mercury, Candy Crush. Like there are some really cool queens that I think we mu- we might possibly see in later seasons of Drag Race. I think I read online that they had signed like a five year contract to not compete on any like other kinds of you know similar TV shows, and that still falls. Uh, that's still in effect, uh, but maybe for further seasons we'll see either some guest judges or some contestants from uh, Queen of Drags, uh, because it it was it was special regardless of of what uh-huh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> I I haven't even watched it. I only watched like a few clips of it, and like it seemed very messy. But I mean, their guest judge roster was stacked. Like they started with Olivia True. Jones, like you said, the biggest drag queen in Germany. Uh, they had uh, Amanda Lepore. Leona Lewis, Pablo Vitar from Brazil, Latoya Jackson, uh, and Laganja Estranja. Like, I forgot that they had had such high quality uh, guests. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Cool. Well, enough of the chit chat. Um, I'm really excited to talk about these girls in more detail because they really came prepared. Um, but before we start, got to say a short disclaimer about sending any kind of negativity or hate to any of the queens that we were talking about. We, of course, are going to be giving our opinions on these looks, and they may not always be as enthusiastic as some, but there is <laughs> no reason to go and spread negativity online. Um, if you like a queen, go and support them, follow them, like, and comment. If you don't, I mean, just maybe keep that to yourself and support the queens that you love. Let's just focus on the positives. <laughs> All right. So first, I wanted to start by looking at the judges and the jury panel, um, because they're a big part of how a season goes. And so first off, we have the host extraordinaire, Barbie Breakout. So Barbie Breakout is 45, from Berlin. She describes herself as an HIV-positive author, activist, and podcast queen. The queens really seem to have a lot of respect for her, and I, I feel really drawn in by her already. As far as, like, other franchise hosts go, I, I feel like she's given me a little bit of, like, Robert Fuchs from Drag Race Svaria. Maybe a little bit of Fred from Holland. More than anything, she gives me Spanky Jackson vibes uh, from Drag Race Down Under. (laughs) And and I love it because, you know, she doesn't have the most over-the-top glamorous looks, but she has charisma and charm for days. I was even watching a little bit of France season one earlier today and a little bit of, like, the Big Berta, like, that really, like, maternal loving energy. Like, you can tell that she is so invested in these queens and, like, really yeah. loves German drag. And I'm not super familiar with all of her experience, but I, first impression, I think she definitely has earned this host spot. Did you have any prior exposure to Barbie Breakout? Um, No, I didn't, actually. I was kind of surprised when the host wasn't Olivia Jones. Right. Which, I mean... A lot of people expected that. Yeah, we've already established that, like, she's the most well-known. Which is maybe also why she didn't do it. Maybe she... Or maybe she's going to be a guest judge at some point. Who knows? Yeah, Yeah, no, I didn't know Barbie Breakout before. But she actually, like you said, like, she actually seems like like a great queen. Very, very invested in in all of them. You could see her getting emotional. Just the entrance speech. Just just how much it means to her. Um, yeah, and I think that just sets a good precedent for for everybody because I mean the queens did seem to be playing nice, you know, when they walked in. Like everybody was very supportive and very uh-huh. happy for each other. And I'm sure, yeah, a bunch of German drag queens in the middle of Colombia are yeah super happy to like see each other and to compete and you know Kiki this whole time. Oh, yeah. it's nice to see that the host is right there with them, even on the runway. I love this green sparkly moment. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and and you can just tell that like. She feels very at home on stage and very comfortable in front of the camera. And um, I'm really glad she's at the home, at least. Oh, for sure. She just seems so excited, like almost as excited as the contestants to be there. She just seems like she's having so much fun being there. Well, I can't wait to see, because usually, especially in these new franchises with uh, first-time hosts, it's fun to watch over the first season how they settle into their role and grow Uh and their confidence as like you know the Uh authority on set. I am really looking forward to seeing that in the season. All right, on at her right hand is Gianni Jovanovic, who I had also never heard of. He describes himself as a tooth fairy and activist, Romani, <laughs> gay, and grandfather. And he is also really fun. I, I love his more like kind of mask for mask presentation. 
but he has continued to show us very sparkly outfits. I mean, purple, I'm always a sucker I, for. I love the suit. Right? It's amazing. <laughs> it's amazing. I love purple, and I love the, like, um, how do you say musta? <laughs> <laughs> what, like the pattern? pattern? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The way yeah. it catches the light. Like, they definitely oh, plan yeah. to be on camera. He's very fun, and I'm looking forward to getting to know him better. Yeah, for sure. Um, and lastly, Diane Brill. Well, she seems really interesting because she is an American that has been in Germany for a while and is obviously really close with Barbie Breakout. I just I love the chemistry between the judges panel. And in this photo, I mean, the first photo I saw of her, I mean, the first thing that came to my mind was Amanda Lepore. Like she's given this right, like, like regal, just luxurious in this red gown. Like I, I, I love that. Yeah. Oh, same. I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't know her before either, so I, I, I love the moment, like, when, when she tells us about the translator in her ear, right? Yes! Who's it called? Herbert? I was, like, surprised, but that is I love you. great, because her German was so bad, but she was so enjoying being there and having such yeah. a great time that it was it was infectious. Yeah. I mean, I did see some people yeah. online being like, why, why, is, why is she here? But I, I'm here for it. I think it's a Same. variety of people, and they're all excited to be there, and they all look fabulous. They look like they have great style, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. Yeah, I hope Habit is going to stay with her, though. Oh, absolutely. It sounds like <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. All right, and for the special guest judge this episode, and now I do try to listen to a lot of German music. I do listen to a lot of like European pop music. Now, Shirin is not somebody that I was familiar with, before this episode, I guess I listened to more like pop and less like rap. Um, uh -huh. But I think they picked a great guest judge because she she ate like these looks that she was serving today. Were, I mean, she could have competed, yeah. right? Right? Like, okay. I mean, I I personally don't listen to rap music either, but Shirin is pretty well known in Germany. Okay, like she's one of the most influential German um, artists at the moment. I mean. I think we can see through the throughout the episode that she is very, to put it in her words, potsick. I mean, like, potsick <laughs> yeah. does no, not mean bitch. <laughs> no, it's pretty much a literal translation of the word "kanti." Yep, which makes this so amazing. Potsick. <laughs> I love the word. I heard it the first time, and I already picked it up. Like, yeah, I'm I really it. hope that that catches on because um, it was amazing. Yeah, I loved it because she served three like totally different looks. That we're all super fierce, and I hope that the rest of the the guest judges are, are on this level. Yeah, and she was super entertaining, and I also felt like her critiques were very fair and right. insightful. Yes, thank you. Hey, I may mean, listen to her some. Why not? Yeah, no, I mean I don't listen to a lot of rap either, but like she's amazing. Yeah. All right. So I guess uh, from here we've got the queens in alphabetical order, and so I just wanted to show yeah the the promo look, their entrance look, and the runway look. And for each of these queens, I would love for us to rate them heiss or scheiss, with heiss being hot and with scheiss being not. It, it means shit. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. not rhyme better. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, barbecues, meet the queens, and promo was super charming. I mean, you can tell they've got a lot of personality, um, and this, yeah. this look is definitely like a strong concept, the strong color story. I love primary colors. Yeah. So yeah, I, I liked this look. For sure, like the skirt, like it looks amazing, and like you said, like the the contrast with all the colors, it's really great. Nice. It's really good. Let's see. They're 25, and they live in Munich, so they bring a nice Bavarian perspective. But they're originally from Bolivia, one of several queens from South America. So I knew that she was going to be bringing some really interesting perspective. Yeah. And I know it is the first time that a contestant and the host have had the same name with yeah. Barbie Breakout and Barbecue. Uh, yeah. Seriously. So much thought seems to have gone into all three of these looks. The entrance look, she had the little noisemaker that looks like a shoe. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Colors. Yeah. Sorry for the, the crappy it, screenshot, but um, yeah, there's the, a lot of personality there. <laughs> yeah. No, the, like, how'd you call it? Noisemaker? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think the uh, noisemaker. Is that what you call it? Or is that just like what you call it? Because that's what it does. I mean, there might be a more specific name <laughs> for it. <laughs> but as far as anyway. maybe the little boy from Louisiana. Now that's a noisemaker right there. 
<laughs> well, for me, I mean, I like I will adapt it, and uh, I mean, yeah, I love it. Like I used I used the kind of thing as a kid as well. Yeah. And I used to always annoy my parents and my aunties. <laughs> What's the German word for it? Uh, Ratsche, I think. I don't know. <laughs> I generally. Yeah. Well, that's hilarious because Germans have a word for everything. So I'm sure there will be one and it'll probably be, you know, 25 letters long. Yeah. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) And let me take this moment to say for the confessional looks, um, trade of the season. I think uh, barbecue has it in the bag. She is so cute. You can marry me uh, any any day that you want. Um, Oh, my God. Right. For like. They look so cute. I was, I was like, yeah, yeah, awestruck. I was like, marry me, please. Well, and talking about well thought out looks, like this main stage runway, is this Bolivian fairy tale, like monster, glamour moment, and like the way uh-huh. it was presented was so sensual, and you could tell that there was so much heart there, and yeah, telling such a like a compelling story that I was, I was absolutely sold. It was, it was unclear whether they were in the top or bottom because I think the judges really kind of wanted clarification because they were so intrigued. But I think after hearing yeah. what it was about, they were definitely in the top. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. I've seen pictures of the, is it called Alabrije? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Um, I've seen pictures of or depictions of it before and um, uh, at least the headpiece, it seems to be like a pretty accurate de- depiction of it actually. Yeah. I love the look. I got to admit, there's two things I want to criticize about it. I was not a huge fan of the zipper, like on her neck. Yeah, and for me personally, I felt like the chest piece could have been a tad bigger. It could have been a little bit higher for sure. The yeah. placement, yeah. and the sizing of it. Um, yeah. In general, I loved all of her looks, okay. and like I loved her personality, and I'm really glad to see more of her. And, and looking forward yeah. to seeing more, um, because the personality is there to match. Um, yeah. In and out of drag, so I feel like. A queen like that does really well on Drag Race. Overall, for barbecue, I would give her a heist. How about you? Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. For all three of her looks and her personality, all four of her looks, actually, I mean, her confessional is pretty heist, too, so, yeah. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to seeing more. She seems like she's definitely got a lot to show. Um, Oh, for sure, yeah. Cool. All right, up next, we have Kelly Heelton. Now, this is a queen you can tell right off the bat has gobs of personality. She's the oldest queen in the cast. She's 41. She's from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and lives in the beautiful city of Wiesbaden. <laughs> I, I, I think it's hilarious <laughs> that she lives in such a random city as Wiesbaden. I went there with my parents once, and the only thing I remember about the trip is that there was a really pretty church kind of like in the distance, and we're like, oh, let's walk there. It'll take half an hour, and two and a half hours later, we arrive. <laughs> and that is the extent of my experience in Wiesbaden. Um, yeah. But, I mean, she is obviously gorgeous. She's got such a beautiful face. And as soon as she steps into the workroom, I mean, she is just 100% pure energy. (laughs) Yeah. Like, this cat look with all the fringe, she's spinning around. Like, it was hard to get this screenshot because she was in motion the entire time. Yeah. I loved it. She is a singer, dancer, actor, um, been doing drag for 16 years. Uh, Does not surprise me at all. Um, And apparently she grew up singing in a gospel choir and does, I think I saw some videos of her doing like queer church services, which, Mm -hmm. you know, we've all got complicated relationships with religion, but work, work girl. Yeah. It needs to be a safe place uh, in the religious world for, for people like us. And uh, she seems to be a part of that. Yeah. It also like, I mean, I didn't know that before, but like now that you told me it, it makes sense to me. Yeah, she seems like like she just seems like a person that wants to be able to like include everyone. So, yeah, it's, it's funny because especially with this main stage uh, runway look, it almost gives me a little bit of like I don't know Jasmine Masters with like that kind right? of personality. Um, and this yeah, look, I mean like with this beautiful like dark blue kind of velvety uh-huh. texture with the pearls studded on. I mean, it's it's not anything like Jasmine Masters' black and white gown, but it gives that like level of, of pageantry and of yeah. drama. And yeah. um, her face also looked amazing. I mean, she knows how to beat a mug, but this yeah. this pose that she struck on the way in and the way out was so dramatic. I, I yes, that was amazing. Like, I love the look itself. Um, I think the color is looks really amazing on her, but the the pose that she struck at the end, like when she uh, exited the main stage, 
It was it was great. It was just like the like the way she hit her face. Not because she has to hide her face, right? <laughs> oh, she looks absolutely. amazing. But... Well, the confidence to be able to hide your face and know that you yeah. still look incredible. It was a very like yeah. um, it was a very Grace Jones moment for me. I, I don't yeah. know, just that the power in her in her presence was was there, and I yeah. I will give an absolute heist. Oh, for sure, yeah, definitely. So up next we have Lele Cocoon, 23 years old, lives in Frankfurt. I don't know if any of y'all caught the joke that she kept saying that Frankfurt was really beautiful because Frankfurt is anything <laughs> but beautiful. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been to Frankfurt once. Ooh. It's not great. <laughs> All right, Lele Cocoon from the first time I saw the promo image, it is giving uh-huh. me... Hugacio Crujiente from España. Uh huh. Uh huh. Really like avant garde paint and look, strong color, like really ornamented. I am living. I yeah. am super excited for her already. The the shapes and the, the, the colors, like yeah. her face makeup, like everything about this is amazing. I love it so much. I'm glad we agree. So I was looking forward to her entrance look, and I almost lost it when she walked in in this Karen of Karens, like super Karen. She's got like the the short 80s, like Wilson Phillips haircut, and she's got the glasses that she takes off and looks at like, she looks absurd, but it is, yeah, it is pure camp. I am obsessed. (laughs) It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I wasn't even bothered by the fact that the breastplate wasn't even, like, she didn't even try to cover it up, right? But I didn't care. Like, I was like, this is amazing. This makes it even better, actually. Oh. Because, like, she looks so much more like a Karen than yes. any actual Karen does. Like, she it's looks deranged. And I mean that yeah. in the best way. Like, she did that through her art. And, like, I am yeah. 100% like absolutely yeah. and it's so different it's such a departure from her promo look that yeah i i really i just couldn't stop laughing and so yeah, you wouldn't expect it from from the promo look yeah well and so obviously looking forward to the runway it's like what what is she possibly going to bring to the first runway of drag yeah. race germany and go, like i mean like, like i have no words like it really yeah. is it is kind of it's kind of a mixture of the first two looks like there is so much drama and so much camp, but also glam. Fashion. And like, yeah. and like she she constructed this outfit so intelligently and like I mean, yeah, it's like denim and like leather almost, like with this blue and brown, but I complement did each other. Not well. expect that it was gonna be denim. Yeah. And like yeah. the way it flows and everything about this is amazing. Yeah. The ornamentation. I love her breasts as well. Yep, yep. Like the almost Lara Crofty breasts, right? Yes, yes. Uh, and like, even though she doesn't have some big hair on, she made sure to have that curl in the yeah. forehead. And the mug is beat. Like, she showed that she can do some avant-garde and some campy looks, but this is this is glamour. Like, yeah. I, yeah. Heiss, 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 heiss. Heiss, 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 heiss. Ouch. Like, all throughout. Like, she's amazing. Yeah. I think she could have taken the win this episode. Yeah, but, but, but no, nope. I'm okay with the winner. Their look was amazing, but Same. she definitely like yeah, definitely second place, right? So yeah, yeah. All right, coming up, we have the Düsseldorf queen, Lorelai Rivers. So now Düsseldorf's a little closer, closer to home for you. Yeah, have you ever heard of her before? No, never. To be honest. Yeah. Well, and um, she definitely seems to have a couple of like really identifying. Features like she regularly does this um, bolt brow, uh, lightning bolt brow that uh, is a little bit reminiscent of like Bosco, um, how Bosco kind of does the you know the yeah. really edgy angular brows. Yeah. Um, the promo look I think looks looks awesome. Uh, I love it. Does yeah. Black. I mean black doesn't always photograph well, but there's enough of like the contrasting colors and stitching and kind of edgy stuff to Yeah. Also her pose like she knew how to pose so her look will translate well on the camera. Yeah. Now, the entrance look, I'm not as big of a fan of. Yeah, um, no. I mean, the, the color story is real nice, but it, it gives me a little bit of, like, I don't know, community theater. Like, she's yeah. got a little prop in her hand, and yeah. the breastplate looks a little bit cheap. But, I mean, the hair is sumptuous and goes really well with it, and she's got her signature mug That's on. Um, yeah. 
So, so yeah, I was curious to see what the runway would be. Um, and again, with the, the pant, which, I mean, the fabric is really gorgeous. Um, and it is a very, like, yes. um, elegant look. But I couldn't help but think of her entrance look when I saw it. And so that kind of ruined yeah. my opinion of it. But she does definitely. look really good. Like, she, she definitely has a gorgeous face. Um, and I don't know. I just had mixed feelings about it. She, she does look very nice. I will say with the explanation she's given, I felt like it was a nice idea. Yeah. The execution, I would personally say, so far, it's not my favorite look on the runway. Yeah. Again, like I said, I thought the idea was actually quite smart. Like, yeah. she's a theater queen, right? So yeah. she chose the red carpet. Like, she has this... The, the, the belt is, like, reminiscent of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. the ropes. Um, the masks. It's all, like, nice. And, it, she, like, especially her makeup, I love. Yeah. I'll give it a... All in all, Zola. I would agree with you that it's... Yeah, yeah, it's Zolala. Yeah. Go on. It's net. Uh, absolutely. All right, moving on to Metamore Kid. Now, this is the first queen that we have from Austria. Um, and you uh -huh. can tell as soon as she walks in, the, the line that she gives uh, and the accent that she gives it in, American audiences <laughs> might not be able to hear it quite as quite as easily, but oof. Um, I know Germans frequently have a hard time understanding Austrians. <laughs> 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 yep. <laughs> <Is> that true? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Depending on where you're from, we sometimes even have a hard time, like, understanding Germans, right? <laughs> true. So, I barely understand Bavarians. And um, <laughs> right. Bavarians, Bavarians are, like, between German and, like, Austrian-German, right? Right. So, uh, yeah. That's, that's a really good way to put it. Um, and, I mean, with the promo look, like, I love... The like graphic yeah. black and white kind of a uh, Cruella Deville type look, um, and it's funny mm -hmm. because her hair out of drag is this two tone black and white. <laughs> yep. um, and in the promo look, it's it's also reflected in her wig, uh, but with the red highlights, um, I think it was really strong, um, mm -hmm. and I wasn't surprised at her entrance look either because it is similarly like real fierce. It's yeah. on on theme with the drag kind of black and white uh, checkered flag, um, and again with the black and white two tone hair. Um, I think is very representative of her drag, and she looked she looked great walking into the workroom. Yeah, for sure. I must admit that I like I personally like the promo look so much. I think it's amazing. I kind of feel like she's not doing herself justice with the entrance look because okay. the other two looks I felt like were much stronger. Yeah. Um, she still looks amazing though. Yeah. I am wary of queens that like I feel like it's perfectly fine to have a signature look. But they gotta be very wary that they that it doesn't get like um, repetitive, repetitive and like yeah. like one note, right? Yep. So I understand her whole like black and white wig thingy. I mean, we've seen it before, and right. people can make it work. I'm not saying they can't. I'm just wary of it. No, absolutely. And so for the the runway look, yeah, it does more closely resemble her her promo look and its yeah and its uh, presence and in its yes. Yeah. Its, ferocity um, she does yeah. have kind of black and white hair but it, she does change it up a little bit yes um, and this kind of That's like true. venus flytrap look is is so cool we've never seen that kind of a look before yeah uh, but with yeah the kind of frill along the breast line kind of mm -hmm. giving that like a uh, venus flytrap edge yeah. and then the long is that attached to her or is it separate is no i'm smart? pretty sure she just took a schwimm noodle and like <laughs> plucked some like Thorny things on it, right? You're right. I bet that is a pool noodle that she puts. Oh yeah, pool noodle. On. Yeah, that's the. No, word. I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it. Yeah, like pool noodles with spikes uh, to give like a vine kind of feeling. Um, yeah. I'm no, I love it. It's amazing. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I, I, I love the her... I love the shoes as well, and like her breast piece, and like the way that she like shaped her like body, right? You like know, the, I didn't the... even notice the shoes and like the kind of mimicking of the of the shape. Yeah, it looks like her feet yeah. were kind of swallowed by Venus flytrap. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> That's that's incredible. Cool. Well, I'm giving her a high size high size. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Or She's whatever very high whatever size. Austrian is for for high size. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help you with that. All right. Up next, we've got the mother or grandmother in her words, Nikita Vegas. <laughs> yep. Now it's nice to see because there have been some young queens so far. I knew that there were going to be some like classic old school drag queens, and Nikita is mm -hmm. definitely the first one that we see. Um, uh huh in the cast and when you wear spikes on your shoulders and stuff some of the first things i think of are vivacious um uh -huh. these, like, you know old school queens that wear these like uh -huh. super dramatic outlines 
Uh, and that's totally what she's giving in this promo look. I, I love yeah. it. Same. Yeah, it's amazing. I think the queens, you can tell she's got she's got sass, she's got attitude, and she's been around the block. So I think, yeah, having her in the cast is superb. Yeah. For sure. When she came into the workroom, she was strongly branded. She made sure that everybody knew <laughs> who yep. she is. Uh-huh. Um, and I love I love the tall boots that go along with it. It's a little bit simple of a look, but like when you are coming into the workroom, it doesn't have to be the most glamorous. It just needs to give everyone in the room and at home a good idea of who you are. And the fact yeah. that this is so strongly branded and so like silly and fun, I'm I'm here for it. Yeah, I love like I love the long glittery boots, like the the yep. shiny boots. They are amazing. Uh, I love the wig. Yeah. I mean, other oh, pink. Yeah, I mean, I love pink. I know absolutely. it's your typical, but I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> no, uh, I, yeah, no, it's it's great. And so when she came out on the runway, you know, I didn't know what to expect because we've seen two very different looks from her. And and the runway look, I, you know, I kind of feel similar to the judges. I mean, she looked nice when she came out because she had kind of the overpiece on and it was very elegant. The hair is nice and big, but it's almost like I can see the separate wigs mm-hmm. and like see how they were like stacked on top of each other, which is not the best. Um, and once she took the outer layer off, it is rather simple. Yeah. I mean, no. she looks good. I mean, the face is beat and she sells it, which uh, she could sell anything, I'm sure, on the runway because she's got yeah. the charisma to do that. But, um, I personally don't mind that you can like see the two wigs on top of each other. Yeah. I I think it's it's kind of charming actually. It's can. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's what I'm expecting from her, right? I'm not expecting right. like a high glam look from her. The way she's been branding herself so far, yeah. She's a campy queen and I love that. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I agree with you that the moment she took the outer layer off, the look like kind of fell flat. I mean it like like they said it's a bodysuit, right? But when she walked out on the main stage with the coat on, I was like, this is amazing. I love it. <laughs> I, I thought it was so great. I, I thought it was like, this is who Corella could have, like, what Corella could have looked like if she wasn't bonkers, right? <laughs> right, right. She made a nice, she made a nice sensible one-piece swimsuit out of the skins instead of... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you. The, the second she took it off, it was kind of, it, it felt kind of flat. So, but you know what? Yeah. Overall, I'm giving her a heist because Same. she yeah. is definitely bringing something nobody else is, and yeah. it's for excellent TV. And yeah, I'm looking. I would probably that. say she's the campiest queen on that season. Yeah, yeah. and I love Absolutely. that. I mean, I and love camp, and she's got the years of experience to prove it. And yeah, I mean, yeah, she totally deserves it. All right, up next we have, woo, Pandora Knox. Now, a lot of people are saying she's given front runner vibes already, and I—I I mean. <laughs> not going to argue with that at all this promo look you can tell that she did not come to play like from the pose it's insane to the hair to the makeup to the look everything about it is it's amazing i what's what i love about drag is that every dimension of this just distorts your perception and yeah. makes you kind of second guess what it is you're looking at and if drag does that i am one thousand percent on board now that i'm looking at it again do you know what Pippi Langstrumpf is? Yeah, right? Yeah, Pippi Longstocking. Yes. The hair looks kind of like she's trying to, like, make a connection there, right? Absolutely. Like, With the long... Pigtails, yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. But, and, but like... It's such an insane angle that it looks totally deranged and almost, like, witch-like. Like, I don't know yeah. what about it is giving me, like, broom, but... Yeah. I love it. And, like, the eyes. I think this is a kind of um, typical eye makeup for her. Um, uh-huh. But... All drag queen eye makeup is meant to, like, exaggerate or, you know, distort dimensions and features and whatnot. But the way that she does it just is so striking. And it makes it really hard for me to take my eyes away from it. Yeah. You know, we've seen a limited amount of her looks. But, I mean, when she walked into the workroom, you could tell that people were shook. They were shook to see her there. Uh, Because even all the way from Vienna, they know who she is. Uh, She is the third cis woman to compete. Um, in Drag Race franchise after Victoria Scon on Drag Race UK and after Clover Bish on Drag Race España season three. And she did not come to fuck around. Oh no. I, I can't with this look. And it's amazing. Um, you know me, I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. I- I'm not even sure if the key is supposed to be a key blade. I don't right. care. 
it's giving me keyblade fantasy i love it your fantasy it is yeah it's amazing i love it yeah like she came like she entered and i was like mind blown well, and it seemed like the other girls agreed with you and felt similarly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And when she came out on the runway, you know, it, it, you have no idea what yeah. to expect. But this is kind of exactly what I would have expected to see something from her. Something sexy, something complex uh-huh. and well thought out, and something that yeah. just captivates you. And yeah. I was I was captivated. Even in the mini challenge, we didn't even look at the mini challenge in depth, but she won the mini challenge, the photo shoot. She was giving this, like, black swan elegance. And it's yeah. funny because Nikita kind of threw shade at her and was like, oh, you're spinning around, so you just laid down on it. And I'm sure I'm sure Nikita was just jealous that she didn't think of that because she made an incredible photo. And like yeah. the movement during the photo shoot was just as beautiful. And I, I'm not surprised at all that she won both the mini challenge and the main challenge. Me neither. Plus, like, I mean, I didn't hear Shireen call Nikita a Fatsika Elsa. <laughs> Which, again, I love it. Oh, and the shape um, that they threw back and forth was just so funny because you can yeah. tell that Nikita is going to bring the drama and the shade of the season. Uh-huh. But that Pandora is a, a professional; she didn't care. Like, yeah, she, she did. Throw all the shade she was like, she want, but she's like, I'm, I'm. Sick. She was like, well, thank you, I guess, for your jealousy. <laughs> right, exactly. Like, she knows exactly where it's coming from, and she knows exactly yeah. how to volley. And and I like that about her because if somebody that looked this good wasn't that like professional and like polished, yeah. it would be disappointing. But she seems yeah. like a total package and uh, unglaublich heiß, 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 scorching heiß. Yeah, here for it. scorching heiß. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing. All three of her looks amazing. All right, and next up, I mean, this is a queen I almost love just as much. Tessa, Tessa. <laughs> I mean, the name first off. Yeah, Tessa, Tessa the name Cole, is amazing. Is so extra. She is from Basel, Switzerland, so she is our first queen from der Schweiz. Um, and I mean, I like to think, at least based off of the dialect and the people that I know, that Swiss people are also kind of nuts. Um, and she, she is bringing all the attitude like she seems like she's got catchphrases for days and Mm -hmm. attitude just oozing out of her pores i love this promo look um it's asymmetrical it's got bright colors big hair and um yeah she looks fierce yeah she does i love the way she posed with it as well i feel like she really knows how to like present the look as well yeah she knows her body yeah she did a great job with it so yeah she came into the workroom in this more animal print number with the long Uh hair um, uh-huh. And it's funny because I was more looking forward to her personality and the things she had to say than the look, because that's what stood out to me from her Meet the Queens. I mean, the look is not anything totally crazy until she turns around, <laughs> and you could. I was going to say, head. and she had the she had she had the whoopee cushion with her. Yeah, <laughs> it's always great. It's always great to learn a new German word and. Um, what was it? Uh, Fortskissen. Fortskissen. Fortskissen, yeah. So you can automatically tell she's got a sense of humor, doesn't take herself too seriously. And then on the runway, when she first walked out, I really loved the drama of this look. Mm-hmm. You know, it was giving me like Natalia Priyakam in the transformation from the first episode of Drag Race Thailand. Like, it's this big, like, kind of swirling around you shape um, in this black. And black is a tough color to wear on the runway. Mostly because it kind of just goes flat. I like the variety in the textures that I see here because I can tell the different parts from each other. But I do agree with the judges in that they're they're just not ornamented anyway. It's just yeah. kind of a flat black. There's no sparkle. Um, there's no extraness to it. She she could have and should have done way more. I, I think she could have stuck to the black, but she had to make easily distinguishable from the purple right because i feel like the look itself um, it works well the way it's structured i love structured looks right right um so i i would agree that like the way it's cut it's amazing the color mm, like it kind of felt yeah. flat yeah but i know that she's got potential and she sells yeah. things on the runway really well so i was kind of yeah. surprised that the judges were so harsh on her but not very harsh on, like, Lorelei, for for example. Yeah. Uh, but I knew that they had to choose someone, and if they had in mind the whole time that they weren't going to send anybody home, then they probably just wanted to make the bottom two as exciting as possible. And she definitely yeah, is a spicy character, um, yeah. so I'm not too upset about <laughs> the placement. Yeah, no, me neither. Um, I'll yeah. give her... 
I'll give her looks a Zolala, but uh, a, a nice net. Uh, but I will give her personality heights, like you know. Yeah, I agree with you to like one hundred percent. The front one look is amazing. The other ones were like, yeah, Zolala. Yeah. All right, we have the only Naomi. Um, she is twenty-two. She is from Cologne. So we have another Huapot queen. Uh -huh. Like from the first time I saw this this promo look, I almost got a little bit of like Tati uh, in the face, just like the way she paints, just because she looks like really? well, she just looks like fierce and kind of bitchy in the way that Tati is um, in the nicest way. For me, and, like, like I immediately thought of Aquaria. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean with the blonde and yeah. the obvious like, I mean she's she's got fashion. Um, she's really like, she looks well. She, that's the thing. She looks like a model. Uh, yeah, like this. This tall, skinny proportions just kind of had me gagged throughout the episode. Like, any time I saw her, I was just kind of agog at the proportions yeah. that she served. No, she's gorgeous. So I, yeah, you see, I think that, I think that affected the, the judgment of her looks from my perspective just because I was so gagged that yeah. her body looks like that. Like, not since, like, Le Grand Dame or Mama Queen or someone that has had these like this stature and this presence all yeah. the front way um, that just kind of stops me in my tracks. Um, yeah. So when she came to the workroom, um, she had on this like yeah full length bodysuit with these straps um, and the long blonde wig, and obviously it suited her really well. And for an entrance look, I think it worked um, super well. So I knew that like on the runway she was going to also kind of you know play to her strengths. Now, the internet tore this look apart like people on reddit are up in arms over the fact that she was not in the bottom over this look and look i will say it is simple but she looks great like yeah. i am sorry but when she rounded that corner my jaw was on the floor because i was just trying to wrap my brain around the proportions of how tall to how thin she was and like it might be a simple look but she wears it well and she looks good i'm sorry you know what i really loved about her look it wasn't even the look itself because i mean yeah. yes i i think we agree that it's like it is kind of basic right like yeah. especially compared to the other looks that we see on the main stage right like what i love about it is that i feel like a lot of high fashion skinny queens they always just fall back on the fact that they're gonna look good at everything right because they have a model build yeah they have a model build right but she was so aware of that she was like i know that my look isn't as high fashion or isn't as like extravagant as the other looks so i'm just gonna try to sell it with what i've got and that's what i loved about it right. like like you said, I mean, she looks like she she still looks amazing. Is it the most amazing look on the on the main stage? No. Would I feel like it would have been fair for her to be in the bottom three at least? I think so. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Um, but I, then again, I mean, I feel like if it's supposed to be her signature look, and that's what she looks like, yeah. um, okay. <laughs> I trade also, places with her. Well, and also it's episode one. You know, I don't think yeah. anybody is trying to blow their entire load on episode one. And the fact that she saved herself from the bottom is proof yeah. that that was, that was a worthy risk. For sure. Yeah. So and I, I love I'll, her so far. She's amazing. Yeah, I'll give her a high... Like, I, I, yeah. I have no qualms about oh. that. So, yeah. Now, moving on to Victoria Shakespeare's. Now, she is one of our queens from Brazil. Um, and she is our second queen that lives in Basel, Switzerland. Uh, she's 29. Um, I thought, like, pheromone realness, because, you know, she's kind of little and mm -hmm. really pretty. Uh, but finally, I saw somewhere online Fontana from Drag Race Svaria. She's also from Brazil, and definitely she's kind of like a brunette version of Victoria Shakespeare's. But yeah, I mean, from the moment you hear her name and see this promo image, you know that there are some Britney Spears, some pop singer yeah. influence, and yeah. I mean, she, she looks gorgeous. Yeah. No, she she's she is gorgeous. I mean, look at like her backside <laughs> and the it's... body, body, adi, adi. Uh huh. Like for sure. And like she, like she's also very cute out of track. Yeah. And like she seems like she's like such a nice person, actually. Yeah. Well, so when she walked into the the workroom, I mean, this look isn't like the most extravagant or over the top, but it definitely says who she is and where she's coming from. 
And I mean, with a big feathery fan, even if the look is a little simple, like you came in with a super <laughs> elaborate prop, um, I'm here for it. Yeah, I I am kind of like, it's nice. Um, what I will say about her is that like, I I like her like personality, and I get where she's coming from. With her, I felt like that like she kind of fell into that thing where it felt kind of one note, right? Because to me, it seemed like I'm glad that you're paying like that you're trying to pay tribute to your heritage, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think that's amazing. But also, it makes you really predictable if that's all you do. Well, considering the look that she presented on the runway, which again looks amazing, very fierce. Yeah, her body looks incredible. Her mug is the right. But these looks do look a little similar. You know, they've all got yeah. some feathers and some skin, and it's yeah. very Brazilian. Um, but and it is just the first episode, so you know there is something to be said for that. But I do think you do want to show the judges as much variety and depth as you can, um, as soon as yeah. you can, just to you know let them know that you can. And I'm not saying she can't, but uh, it'll be interesting to see the rest of her wardrobe and see how similar it is to this. I'll give her a heist. Um, because, I mean, yeah. obviously, she looks good. Um, yeah. And this is definitely her strong suit, but it'll um, be interesting to see yeah. what else she can do. I'll definitely give her a heist as well, but I do hope that she will bring more variety. Yeah, we'll see. And last yeah. but not least, we have Yvonne Nightstand. Uh, the name I know I love it too like when I saw it written I was kind of confused because I didn't know if it would be like Ivana or yeah. like I didn't know if there would be some quirk of the pronunciation but Ivan Nightstand is pretty hilarious and it's, I have to get it's really yeah yeah um, <laughs> and her promo look was great like there's a lot of personality here I love the the gaudiness of the color and the clash of fabrics uh, you know the inclusion yeah. of the black and white checker um, it's not super elaborate but it is no. um it makes an impression yeah i think it's great i love the i love the i love the color contrast yeah it's amazing absolutely so she was the first one to walk into the workroom sorry for the terrible screenshot um it was the best <laughs> look at the outfit i could get um uh -huh. but it was really fun i mean it doesn't it doesn't tell me a ton about her drag i feel like but it was cute and fashionable um and it's got that kind of edgy uh mullety kind of wig which you know i definitely like and for an entrance look, absolutely. Yeah. No, it's great. It was it was really nice. And she is just she's so likable. Her personality, um, mm -hmm. like yeah, out of drag, she definitely gives me like Jomber's blonde. Uh, it's like um just a really likable, like somebody that you want to be friends with. I, yeah, I don't know, sure. I really found her to be um kind of magnetic personality wise. Um and this runway look was was also very interesting. I I, I'm not sure how much it tells me about her like signature book, um, but it is very fun and playful, and there's been you know a lot of thought put into it. Um, it's not my favorite look, but, um, but yeah, I thought it I thought it looked good on the runway at least. For me, uh, I I like it as well, but I also feel like it's a bit all over the place. I feel like she was trying a little bit too much with it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I understand trying to get like different references or like different like things you want to try in your outfit but i felt like if she cut like back on one or two of those things that would have elevated the look a bit more yeah no i can imagine that the first runway on drag race there's a lot of pressure to show as much of yourself as you can and i can see that turning into um trying to show a lot of ideas and a lot of things yeah oh. yeah so on to the results uh for me i don't know if this is the same for you um, just because all the seasons up until this point have been foreign seasons for you. But in some of the foreign franchises, um, it's a little bit harder to understand the judging and like the placements and stuff. And like, I never know if it's due to, you know, cultural misunderstandings or uh, just production shenanigans. But uh, I was very curious to see how it would play out um, in Drag Race Germany, at least for this first episode. And not surprisingly, really for, for anybody, the winner was Pandora Knox. And yeah. I mean, I feel like from the promo shoot on, she showed nothing but strengths and yeah. um, charisma and looks. Yeah. And I'm not mad at all. Nope, not at all. I mean, <laughs> her looks were amazing. I will say I'm very curious how she's going to do in like uh, acting or um, comedy challenges. 
True. Because while I do feel like she's amazing, like looks wise, and like she knows how to perform. Yeah. I'm not sure as to whether or not she's gonna be like very funny. All of her three looks that we've seen so far, plus the one in the mini um, in the mini challenge, they were all amazing. Uh, I am not surprised at all. She should have won this. Well, and that's usually how the how a winner cut can go is you know somebody who's already good at several things, but then discovers during the course of the competition that they're also really good at like yeah, yeah. comedy, and that, those may be things that she's pretty easily able to pull out even though she doesn't have a lot of experience with it, just because she's a consummate performer. Um, I'll be really excited to see that, because, you know, even if she's not great at it, that makes great TV, you know, when the frontrunner yeah. kind of stumbles and, you know, other people get an advantage. Um, I'm excited to see how this plays out, because it has been a little bit uh, RuPaul's best friend race Germany, uh, just because they are also supportive mm -hmm. of each other. But, Except for I mean, Nikita. Exactly. You see people like <laughs> Bringing a much needed um, shady yeah. angle to the episodes, and I'm sure as they go on in the competition, yeah. there will be more tension. Um, I love that I, they were all very supportive of each yeah. other, and I don't like it when when queens are catty for no reason. Right. As soon as they walk, but like, the yeah. yeah, they were all very supportive of each other. So while I disagreed with Akita, and it was very blatant that she was just jealous, <laughs> uh, especially after like she landed in the bottom three. And right. then you could see that she's just extremely insecure. Yeah. For no reason, right? Because right. I felt like she looked amazing. Yeah. Um, well, it, it but, may have been just for the TV. Yeah. You know, it may have been yeah, just of for the camera. Yeah. And, like, you know, regardless, we owe her, you know? We owe her yeah. a little debt no. of, of gratitude for the shade. It yeah. It was nice. <laughs> I love to be, like, I, I love to see some shade, at least. Yeah. Exactly. But the bottom yeah. two end up being Tessa Testicle and Victoria Shakespeare's. And, yeah. and you know they don't end up sending anyone home. And if that was the plan all along, then I'm sure they just wanted to choose people who, you know, could feasibly, plausibly be in the bottom, but still put on a really good show. And I mean, these two are excellent performers. Um, yeah. I mean, the, the lip sync, as others online have noted, was a little bit messy. It seemed like Tessa didn't know maybe all the words and Victoria had a couple of moments of, of difficulty with, I don't, I don't know, the performance, but um I still think that it was something someone said is that they thought that it might have been just because they were both so desperate, you know, yeah. like they've flown all this way and they've come all this way and nobody wants to go home first. And, you know, desperation can make you do really awesome things and it can make you do really messy things. And I feel like there was a good mix of both from them. I feel like it was very genuine and very authentic. Um, and I'm glad no one went home, but, yeah. um, but I mean, the Sharon song was a mouthful. It was wordy as all hell um, and difficult uh -huh. to do. But it was it was a sassy song, and I totally dug it. And I thought they did a great job. Yeah, no, it was great. I felt like, like you said, you could kind of sense the dis desperation in both of their performances because I felt like Victoria kind of like at some point just like was throwing stunts around and like Tessa was trying to grab the attention away from her and like. Right. But I mean, that's the point, right? Right, absolutely. That's the whole point. And <laughs> like, I was entertained. I was not mad that anybody that nobody was sent home. I was kind of confused. I'll be honest. When she said that Tessa is staying, I was like, okay. I personally would have chosen Victoria, but fine. Right. And then she was like, oh, you're staying as well. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> fine. See, that's fine by I me. I wasn't upset when she mentioned Tessa first, just because. I knew that Tessa would make really good TV. You know, she's got the personality and she's got the sass to, like, you know, be just mm -hmm. camera candy. And not that Victoria isn't, because Victoria is gorgeous and looks so good on the runway. Um, but I was, I guess I was looking forward to seeing Tessa more. And so I was hoping that if someone went home, that it wouldn't be her. Um, yeah. But I'm, I'm very glad everybody will be here next week. I agree that, that Tessa would definitely make better TV. Just going off of the performance alone, I probably would have picked Victoria. Yeah. Well, it's fun to see a queen like Tessa that has all the charisma that she needs, but maybe the, the looks need a little bit of help. Because, you know, in a season of Drag Race, you do bring a lot of the outfits with you, and there are, you know, maybe one or two design challenges. But I think there's a lot of opportunities for you to develop your aesthetic if that's something yeah. that, you know, isn't your strong suit over the course of a season. I mean, plus, we've seen a lot of queens that, like, seemed 
unpolished at first or right. were unpolished at first and then ended up like having great careers right right absolutely especially i mean shangela new, right well in a new in a new country for the first time too like yeah. you know the german drag scene has not had this kind of magnifying glass on it you know yeah at exactly least international yeah. perspective and so you know for the first yeah the first runway and the first lip sync um, I mean, because that was the first experience of all 11 of those queens, you know, not just the two that are lip syncing. So I think um, having everybody experience it and no one have to really face the consequences of having to leave. Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it's good for everybody. And I think we'll yeah. really light a fire under their asses for episode two to like whatever the challenge is to like, give it everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure really excited. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Oh, and do you want to explain the name Full Throttle and why? Um... <laughs> oh right we didn't talk about that yet right okay so i mean y'all know what throttle is right uh right. and full just means full so like there's a german word called total and it's like an idiot basically um <laughs> that's fitting yeah for me <laughs> but like <laughs> no no I, I, like it like a total is probably like a clumsy idiot right like and um so Full throttle kind of also sounds like full throttle, and uh, that was uh, yeah. We just thought that was amazing. That means you're a a fully and bumbling idiot. <laughs> period. <laughs> period. On period. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Well, this was so much fun, and I am looking forward to next week. Um, and we're gonna get more and more cutthroat as we start facing eliminations. And this cast starts narrowing down, um, but I cannot wait to see what these girls have brought with them. And I can't wait to see what you think about it. Yeah, same. I'm well, very much looking forward to kicking about you with it, oh, about yeah. to you, about it, with you, <laughs> about yeah, it. Whatever. Look, we can we can do more Denglish as the episode. <laughs> uh, whatever is easy to us. Ega, scheißega. I'll try. <laughs> but you know, once my brain is in English mode. Nope. I'm just so talented, right? So gosh, I'm so jealous of you. Because <laughs> I'm never really in English mode. Even when I'm in English mode, I can't even talk right. I'm from the south. <laughs> I'm from the south. We don't know no English good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad I have you here to translate for everyone watching at home. Yeah. No, I'll I'll try my very best. <laughs> I'm very glad to be doing this with you. Well, thank you all so much for watching as well and listening. And we will see you next week for episode two of Drag Race Germany Season 1. Cheers! Bye! <laughs> of course, I say cheers and you say bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. <laughs>